Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats! My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is the show where we demystify stuff like the Mac and stuff from Apple and stuff from Microsoft and your computer and smartphones and all that stuff. It's true. Sure. It is, isn't it? So today on the show, there's a brand new product that's been introduced out there in technology land and we're going to make you guess what it is. Ready? Critter. Can you see that, Matt? Yeah. Critter. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Any idea what it is? Should you again? <laughs> let it snow, let it snow. Could you do that a couple more times? Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. I really have no clue what you're trying snow to get leopard. at Snow Leopard! Snow Leopard, the new operating system from Macintosh. And in case you're wondering, where is, what happened to it? Where is, here it is, look, see. What an impression. Look at that. <laughs> Yes, today on the show, Sean is going to tell you why Snow Leopard is the best thing that's ever happened to the technology world, and I am going to make jokes through the whole thing. Of course. <laughs> now you are, aren't you? You're going, to, you're going to talk about this new operating system from Mac, and mm -hmm. are you going to be somewhat critical? Um, maybe. Okay, I hope so. All right, well, let's take a break when we come back. Uh, introduction to Snow Leopard, today on Lab Rats. You know, in, in, in case you didn't really get the gag, I don't know, look, see? is a leopard with snow on it. The question I have is, does, do leopards have udders? That's what I want to know. Okay, yeah, they're just configured differently. Okay, Mr. Carruthers, I know you've been dying to do this episode. <laughs> I know that people have sent email going, please do a snow leopard. We have gotten a few uh, requests for this. Okay, so where do you want to start? Like, it's fabulous, I love it, go buy it, thanks a lot. Yeah, pretty much. No, the, the, there's been some questions about it because Apple has gone on record as saying, all right, so this isn't a full new operating system. It's like Leopard, but it's refined. So it's taking something that already existed and just slightly tweaking it's it. Snowing on it. it. Yeah. So some people, some people are saying, some people are saying, why are we going to pay for a service pack hmm. that comes for free from uh, from Windows? Right. And that's a, it's a fair question. But at the same point, they've done a lot of stuff in here that actually is really good and actually is worth worthwhile. And we'll, we'll talk about pricing later on. Okay. But there, there are a few really key things in here that are very important. What's the on number part. one feature? The number one feature. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the, the biggest thing is it's, it's something you can't actually see. It's a lot of the stuff that they've done under the hood here. So up till this point, uh, uh, Apple has been sort of tre treading a little bit lightly on this. You know, with uh, any operating system or application, you've got legacy users and you've got regular new users that are upgrading uh, every every. They want the latest so. and greatest. They want yeah. the latest and greatest. So uh, the Apple machines switched over to Intel processors a while ago at this point, a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that, it, they're using an architecture called PowerPC, right. yeah, yeah. which is a completely different kind of processor inside. It used different instruction sets. So since that point, to make things run on these machines, you actually had to have both PPC or PowerPC code and Intel code right. built into this thing. And they've... Gotten rid of it finally. So if you have an old Mac, if you got an old with a Mac, power PC chip, it's no Snow Leopard for you. There's no Snow Leopard for you on this. You can yeah. you can use some PPC code and it'll run under Rosetta, but it actually the guts of the operating system itself, it's gotten rid of it, which has freed up about seven or eight gigabytes of space on the uh, on the machine itself. Okay. Um, now that has also uh, allowed them to go into 64-bit fully, no compromise. Let's talk about what 64-bit is because that's an important question. All right, well, 64-bit is uh, a way of moving data through the system, more or less. So up until this point in Windows and in Mac, there's been 32-bit and 64-bit systems. 32-bit is a smaller chunk of data. 64-bit is twice the size of data. Now, it uh, just basically can send twice as much through every time it does in yeah, instruction. The way I like to characterize this is like if you think about the circuits inside of your computer and the, the electricity travels on it, it's like a highway with a bus mm -hmm. on it. So a bus would be a packet of data that moves across... In fact, we call it a bus, actually, which is a different mm -hmm. thing altogether. But, but so, so a 32-bit um, system would, be, would have a minibus with 32 seats, mm -hmm. right? And a 64-bit and a system would actually have would be a bigger bus with 64 seats in it. So right. per, per packet that moves across the system, there's double the amount of data. Right. Now, you don't get double the amount of performance out of this because of the way it all, it all adds up. Mm -hmm. But you do get maybe 1.5 times mm -hmm. uh, the speed just by going to 64-bit, mm -hmm. providing everything is compatible. Right. Um, so that, that's one of the really key things. So going to that higher bit uh, count in there actually has 
sped things up in addition to getting rid of the PowerPC code. Um, so the other thing that's in here is uh, something called uh, Grand Central Dispatch. Um, again, it's something you can't see, you can't point to, you can't open it up necessarily on here, but it serves a, a key um, feature. Uh, it has a key role in here because now in addition to going Intel, all Intel processors, uh, bar a few at the very uh, intro of the intro, in Intel launch on Apple, mm -hmm. have multiple cores. Yeah. So a multi-core system means basically they're putting two processors where one used to be on the same die. So mm -hmm. there's one thing that looks two like a processor. Two brains in one skull. Kind two of brains idea. in one skull. Yeah. And in some cases, like uh, the Mac Pro computers we used to edit this, it has eight yeah. inside there. Right. Yeah. And, and can theoretically go up and up and up. Right. Unfortunately, to use all of those different processing cores, you have to code your software to make use of it. So right. the chances are a lot of... Uh, um, uh, Windows apps and Apple apps up to this point have used one core. You'll fire up a program and it'll just go whacking away at that one core and these other three or seven are just sitting there going, hey, over here, need some information over here. Yeah. So what Grand Central Dispatch has done is it made it uh, very much easier for the programmers to, to tap into that. Before right. they had to write it manually to go to those other cores. Mm -hmm. Now Apple has put a layer in there that is actually directing traffic to right. and from. Right. So, okay. and again, that'll speed things up and it'll, you know, spread it across the various cores as opposed to just all happening here. Right. So it's kind of a traffic oh, no. cop or it's a d distributed stuff. It's like a project, project manager almost, you know, says get a team together and says, okay, here are all, everything we have to do and distributes it amongst all the workers. Pretty much. Cool. Yeah. Okay, good. And there's one more uh, upgrade in, in terms of that that's really worth mentioning. That's something called OpenCL. Mm -hmm. And now uh, it's a, an acronym and I'm not 100% sure what it stands for, but I know what it does. And now you've got two processors in most computers. And you've got the, the one multi-core processor, but there's another one sitting inside a lot of machines, and that's your graphics processor. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing a game like Duke Nukem 4, which you'll, it's due out any day now, um, it's you know crunching away a lot of data, calculating where everything's supposed to be on this scene, doing shading, lighting, all of that other stuff. But when you're sitting there in Word, what's it doing? Nothing. Nothing much at all. Mm -hmm. And so there's a whole pile of wasted potential here. Now what OpenCL does is it farms out some of the tasks that it's doing on the regular processor to the graphics processor saying, here, do this, and then it'll send it back. So it'll calculate and send it back, calculate so and send it back. It actually uses all the resources in the system right. that are idle. Yeah, so the That's graphics cool. uh, in, in most machines, when you're surfing the web, it's just sitting there doing nothing, and now it's being put to work. Nothing to see here other than the guts of this thing. Yeah, for, for those parts of it, but there are some improvements to it as well. So Bring on the candy. Come on. Okay, so it's all about candy, isn't it? First of all, we'll, we'll go over to uh, the Finder here. Now, the Finder is uh, your entry point. It's like Windows Explorer in Windows. It's how you access your system mm -hmm. and see everything in here. Now, it's uh, been completely rewritten. Now, it uh, is being rewritten in Cocoa, as they call it, um, from the ground up. And it's been uh, given a few extra features here, which will make some people go, yes, finally. Mm -hmm. Now, the first one uh, is uh, when you're in icon mode here you can see all these icons and you might have thought to yourself, well, I'd like to make them bigger. Beforehand, you had to go over to the uh, system preferences, go into the icons and start s scaling them up there, change them, and then bam, it's just like a, a load of work. Now all you gotta do is go down to the bottom and just move the slider, just like you do in, uh, in iPhoto or any other of your visual apps that allow you to display a number of images at the same time. So you've got thumbnails here, you've got uh, images, you've got the program uh, icons, and you can just make them really huge if you really want. It's not necessarily practical, practical to do that, but you can make well, it them It would be really for the visual tiny. impaired, for example. My dad yeah. has macular degeneration, so mm -hmm. he doesn't see. So the idea of expanding key elements on the, on the screen to help him to see better actually makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's one thing that you can do. So, I mean, the, the finder slider bar is pretty small, so if you know where it is, then that'll help. But uh, even if you just want to blow up a whole pile of thumbnails of pictures just to see what's in the picture at a glance. A, a key stroke that probably does that automatically. There probably is probably somewhere. Uh, another thing about the Finder as well, and, and you may have run across this because I know you've used this for uh, your stereo system before, um, and you might have like something that's running on your machine or uh, you have a USB key that's in there with your MP3s or you've got photographs on it and you've launched them on here and you've pressed the eject button on that USB key or an external yes. hard drive, yes. and it says, sorry, can't eject that, it's in use. Something's in use. We don't know what. We don't know what's happening, what's using it. Sorry. Too bad. Just shut everything down on your system and maybe it'll get better. Mm. Now. Force eject? 
well, now you can just press the button, and if uh, something is in use, it'll say, the disk no name couldn't be ejected because Microsoft Word and QuickTime Player are using it. Ah. Now, quit those applications and then try to eject the disk. Now you know what's using it at the very least, so you it's can useful. shut down those applications right. and go. And uh, rather than hunting and seeking and just trying to figure out what was using it. Because sometimes you lose track. And so some people are probably saying, it's about time. It really is about time that they did this. Right. But then again, look at all the Windows error messages that you get. Wait, Windows error messages? Error minus 7401. A catastrophic error has occurred. At least Microsoft apologizes now. We're just really sorry for any inconvenience. Yeah, there's no apologies here. We do, right? OK, uh, the doc exposure feature. I'm excited about that. Do uh, tell. Doc expose. So expose. Expose. So mm. in, uh, in the Mac uh, beforehand, there's something called expose, where if you go off to the corners, things will fly away, and it'll, it'll rearrange things in different ways. Now they've applied this to the doc. So I've got several things uh, open on my machine at the moment. I've got a, a Word document. Uh, but I've got several, um, several Safari uh, web pages open here. So what I can do is I can go over to the doc, go over to the application in question, click on it, and, and launch it. Right. But I can also now click and hold, and it'll actually spread them out all over the screen so you can see the various windows that are going. So if you've got 10 different windows, it'll actually show you what's going on on each of them. So you can go straight to the right one instead of having to cycle through all your windows looking for the right one. Right. So that's, that's a really helpful feature. OK, cool. There's a new version of QuickTime, apparently. I'm reading all the crib notes over here <laughs> you've written. Because you haven't uh, taken a look at this. No, I have not. But I do know there's snow on the leopard. There's snow on the leopard. <laughs> I've seen the packaging. All right, so for, for QuickTime, uh, it's now something called QuickTime X or QuickTime 10. Right? Yeah. So they've upgraded to the newest version. And uh, there's a few things with uh, QuickTime. Now, beforehand, you'd have to go pro. You'd have to spend $30 to do some extra functionality. Now, the last version, they included uh, full size, you have the ability to play full screen for free. But there's still a few things that you couldn't do. You couldn't trim the video, you couldn't uh, you know, crop and all that. Those have been added in now. And uh, in addition to that, QuickTime, when you're uh, uh, in it, has a little arrow right here on the uh, player controls that allow you to, to share. And you can now upload directly to YouTube. And you want to know why that's important now? I do. It's important because you can go into QuickTime and actually go into new screen recording. Ooh. Now I'm recording my screen. So if I want to show somebody how to do this, I'll just click on this, click Start Recording. And I'll say, OK, well, this is how you do and eject. And it's going to give me that error message okay, again because I'm using so it. So I was excited off the top, new guts, blah, 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 64-bit. But this? This is important because now you want to show your, your family how to do something. Yeah. All you got to do is do the screen recording, stop it. Now you can upload it to YouTube, and they now can you see can it. it. Now, new Snow Leopard has YouTube functionality. YouTube and tutorial functionality. OK. So you can do that. All right. So All right, moving on, because we're running out of time here, big guy. All right, so I like the next one. One last uh, thing is if, uh, if it's the same one that you've got over there. Chinese support. Uh, that's, that's afterwards. We've Chinese got support. one more, so that's, that's at the end. We've got gesturing. Now, you know that you've got two-finger gesturing uh, on, on this. So what you about can... one-finger gesturing? Yes, you can do that, too. <laughs> you could always do that. So previous release, you could use two fingers to scroll and things like that, two yeah. fingers to right click. Yeah. Now you can use three fingers and four fingers on the pad at the same time. Um, four fingers will actually allow you to, to change your application. Go down, it'll actually uh, do expose, show you that. Go up, and it'll actually get rid of everything on your desktop. So it's a very quick way of getting at these things that you used to have to move your mouse over into the corner and do. Um, so that's one thing. Three fingers actually allows you to Let's get into the uh, proper uh, tab here. Three fingers allows you to actually navigate inside Safari. So three fingers this way or that way will go forward or back. So that's, that's a really nice function, really quick and easy. Mm -hmm. The thing that you were just mentioning beforehand, Chinese character support. Mm. Uh, beforehand, you used to have to type in a whole long series of keys to, to get characters to come up. Now you can use the, trach, the touchpad here and just draw it. Oh, onto yeah? there, yeah. So when you're in the right Whoa. mode for entering well, that's Chinese characters, clever. you can just draw it. And the accessibility features that it's added in using that, um, now you can just move your finger around the pad, and it'll use VoiceOver to tell you where you are on the on the screen. Okay, no well, I, I mock it, but actually it's a good thing, right? Yeah. So again, for someone with macular degeneration that may not be seeing so well, that might be a godsend. Especially, especially if they're Chinese. Good. Especially if they're Chinese. Right. <laughs> and last but not least, for Sorry. for. Uh, for people that uh, think that Apple doesn't do enough for Microsoft, 
it's now the only operating system that comes with built-in exchange support. Really? No Windows 7? It doesn't have built-in exchange support? I guess it's true. It doesn't? Not yet, anyways. Thank you, Steve Jobs. You're my buddy. Don't forget, of course, uh, the key feature of all of this, the most exciting thing I think about um, Snow Tiger, what it was called, <laughs> the price, right? The price. Now, how much would you pay for all this? Not you, but you out there that actually are interested in this. I would pay a lot of money for this. No, you Come wouldn't. on, Chinese support, that's worth a lot of money. <laughs> no, it is. Okay, what is it? $29.99, oh. $39.99, $49? It, it is $29. Deal. $29 US. Now, here's, here's where it gets interesting. Is from a guts perspective and the changes that it's made, it may be as different from the previous version, even though they're not sort of saying that, as Windows Vista is from Windows 7. Mm -hmm. How much is Windows 7 going to cost you? A lot of money. A lot of money. It's yeah. going to be over $100. 99 I think. 99 at the very least, yeah. right? Yep. So for, for Snow and Leopard, you can get the one single uh, upgrade for 29 bucks. You can get the family pack that will do five machines for about 59 And uh, if you have an older version, you can get uh, like Tiger uh, before Leopard. And you can't do the straight upgrade path, and which you can't, with the upgrade uh, disk. It's about 169, I think, but that also comes with a full functional copy of um, iLife and iWork. So you have everything that you can uh, get in there. Mm -hmm. So $169 gets you everything. You can upgrade six machines uh, heck of for under $100, which is what it'll cost you to upgrade one stinky machine in the Windows universe. I agree. It's fantastic. There you go. There's the uh, Snow Leopard experience from Mr. Sean Carruthers. Uh, go buy it, $29.99 of your hard-earned dollars a steal of a deal, especially if you're a blind Chinese person. <laughs> All right, take, let's take a break. When we come back, I don't know, but it's something to be fun, whatever it is, as long as it has a snow before. Yeah, we'll read your hate mail. <laughs> snow pictures. Snow pictures. Yeah. That's what I think of your stinky snow. <laughs> For those of you that uh, are thinking about switching from Windows to a Mac, God forbid, um, you may want to see our 10-part uh, series by uh, Doc Callahan on Butterscotch.com called, uh, I guess, Switching to Mac. So we're going to take a, a look at a quick clip from that series when we come back. Picture time. Welcome on deck. I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. On the Mac, the Apple menu has mostly system-related items on it. It tells you about this Mac, you can do software updates, about your Mac OS X software. You can access all of your system preferences, get things about the dock, locations, and also you can do things like put the Mac to sleep, restart it, shut it down, or log out. If you want to see the entire luscious, delicious 10-part episode a uh, 10 part series of that, uh, of that uh, tutorial series, you should go over to butterscotch.com and look, look that up. You will love it. You will want to switch to Mac immediately, I promise you. See, he, he, he says so anyway. I switched. He did, didn't he? Uh, okay, <laughs> time to go to picture time. Do we have any picture of leopards? Uh, we have no pictures of leopards. Snow? We have no pictures of snow. Okay. We can pretend. We could. We can, we can fix it in post. We could. Put all snow right. on these pictures. Well, first of all, yeah. we have from our friend Tyler, who is in Salem, Oregon. This is his desktop. And this is using a technology actually based right here in Toronto called Bump Top. Oh. Yes, uh, so Ooh. there you go. It actually changes up the look of your desktop. And uh, you can find out more about it on this download. We did an episode on that uh, this download uh, a short while back. Way to go, Tyler. Very good. There you Thanks. go. And we also have one from Sandeep, who's in Sandeep. Bangalore, India. Right. And uh, he's wearing a sweater, so it might be getting ready to snow. Maybe, maybe not in, in, in India, no. Sweater vests rock. Sweater vests are pretty awesome. I love them. Awesome. So there we go. All right, if you want to uh, send your pictures to us, and of course it could be videos and pictures of you and your, your sweater vests and your bump tops and your snow leopards and whatever it is, you can email. Upgrade to Snow Leopard because it's really, really awesome for only $29, no matter what stupid Andy says, at labrats.tv. There you go. It's a good, good email address. Uh, or more simply, feedback at labrats.tv. But seriously, send to the other one. <laughs> It'll get there, really. All right, Mr. Carruthers, thank you. Good episode. I know I mock you, but you, you do a nice job in the face of me. 
I just learned to ignore you about 100 episodes ago. It's okay. Well, you get your own back. In a couple of weeks, I'm going to do uh, Windows 7. So. It's true. So you'll, you'll get your own back then. The problem is I actually kind of like Windows 7. Mostly. Mostly. Stay oh. tuned to find out what I don't like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for, uh, for pushing play this week. Um, we would be foolish to be here if you weren't out there. So my name is Andy Walker. I'm John Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Snow cow. <laughs>